Welcome to the Cycling Tips Field Test, Steamboat Edition. And what better place to test a bike from the flatlands of Belgium than the high mountains of Colorado? This is the Ridley Canzo A, Ridley's answer to a versatile aluminium gravel bike at a more affordable price point. The Belgian bike company has been busily expanding its range of gravel bikes over recent years. In its carbon fiber range, there's the aero gravel racer Canzo Fast, the all roadish Canzo Speed, and the newly released Canzo Adventure. Meanwhile, the Canzo A sits somewhere between the Canzo Speed and perhaps a little closer to the Canzo Adventure in purpose, all while hitting a noticeably lower $2,500 US price point. That price gets you a Hydroform triple butted frame set, clearance for 700 by 42, or 650 by 55 millimeter tires, and the ability to mount fenders, racks, or all sorts of accessories. As tested, the bike is equipped with Shimano GRX 2x10 speed gearing and Shimano RS 171 wheels. The rest of the build is basic, but functional stuff. Among the bikes tested at field test, the Kanzo A has a relatively long and low fit that's more typical of a road-leaning gravel bike. Unfortunately for Ridley, the scales don't lie. At 11 kilograms, the Canzo A is the second heaviest bike we have at the Steamboat Field Test. And the only bike heavier than it is the Marin Nicasio 2, which happens to be steel and $700 cheaper. On paper, there are some obvious highlights, but also some significant limitations. It's time to find out how it all plays out in the ride. Right. We have had a whole bunch of, I think, pretty distinctive bikes at this year's field test. However, this Ridley Conzo A is pretty, like, it, it plays it pretty straight, I think, right? What did we think of this bike? Ellen? I had some pretty direct words about it. Um, I came back and just immediately said that it just felt like a cyclocross like bike. It didn't really feel like anything unique or revolutionary, like some of the other bikes that we've ridden this week that really sort of push the rock forward. This bike just felt like the cyclocross bikes that I was racing back in 2010, 2012. Um, so that was 10 years ago. It was, yep, that's exactly what I said. It mm. feels like exactly the cyclocross bike that they've been making forever. Um, so while it's not bad, it was just kind of unimpressive. I felt like there could be a little bit more innovation going on, but all in all, it wasn't offensive. Yeah, I would say Ridley categorized this as part of their new adventure range or within their new adventure range, and it doesn't give me that sense at all. It might have mounts, and you might be able to put adventurous accessories on it, but it does. And big tires. And big tires, it can fit a 42 mil tire, uh, but it doesn't feel like that to me. It feels much more like what you found. It fits like a kind of like a, what you'd expect of a like almost performance leading road bike, but it does so at the same time with the handling of a cyclocross bike, it's not what I'd want to take on an adventure or go touring with or just spend a long day in the saddle on. It feels like it's kind of been designed for a short, sharp ride. Right, and it's quite long in terms of the reach. Like the rider position is pretty aggressive, right? Very cyclocrossy. Hmm, yep. like long cyclocross, reach, short stack. Road, yep. What about things like ride quality and frame stiffness, stuff like that? Like, did it feel snappy? Was it comfortable or anything like that? Yeah, my sense was um, this was one of the several bikes that I took on that sort of mountain bike test loop that I subjected most of our off-road bikes to. And well, it was okay. I felt pretty comfortable riding it because it did, like I said, feel very familiar to some of the old school cyclocross bikes. Uh, it wasn't super playful. There were a couple of opportunities to kind of get the bike up in the air, either via a bunny hop or a little bit of a tabletop. And it was okay, but it wasn't doing very much for me in the air. And I think another thing you mentioned in terms of like the ride quality, I think you had said before that you kind of felt like it was a little more chattery, like you had a harder time keeping it on the ground when you wanted it on the ground, right? Yeah, the bike was very, very loud. Uh, something I was really disappointed by because I think that it's it can kind of impact your confidence when you're riding a bike that's just constantly rattling. Uh, and this bike was, I believe this was the loudest bike that I rode all week, hmm. if I recall correctly. Dave? Yeah, quite stiff. I think the noise is coming from the drivetrain. There's a two by 10 drivetrain there, which doesn't have the same level of chain security and that the chain does start to slap around on that metal frame quite a bit when you get into some of the rowdier gravel. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, it's just the ride quality, I, I can only really categorize it as, as stiff. There wasn't really any obvious compliance to that frame or in the seat post. 
any comfort you're getting from this bike is coming from the tires. And as we'll probably get to, even that there wasn't a lot in. Well, let's go ahead and dive into the components then. So we did run into an issue with the tires, right? Because Dave, when you and I were getting all these bikes ready before we came here, um, we were working to set all these bikes up tubeless and well, this bike still has tubes. Why is that? They're not tubeless ready tires. So really this is one of the only few bikes that we had certainly at this price point that didn't come with a tubeless ready tire. So you can in theory convert that rim to tubeless not super easily you need a rim tape it doesn't have the best tubeless profile on it that i've seen of, of wheels on the market but it can be done but you're going to need to buy new tires you're going to need to buy rim tape valves and sealant i think we price it up the cheapest you're going to get into that is about 130 dollars, and that's assuming you do it yourself so yeah it's still a little ways away and i think this bike for that size tire i wouldn't want to ride it with tubes got it hmm okay all right, so looking past the issue with the tubeless tires or the non-tubeless tires, uh, Ellen, what'd you think of the drivetrain and the brakes? Starting with the brakes in particular, uh, or rather the hoods, I had a bit to say about this. It's kind of been a theme talking about having smaller hands and kind of how that can impact your grip on the bars. These hoods in particular are really big and it can make it really hard to get a good grip on them. Uh, so didn't really like that. It's not super enjoyable to ride when you're kind of struggling to hold onto the bars. And my other really big gripe with this bike is that it's a size small, but it has 172.5 cranks, which is just way too big for pretty much anyone that's going to be able to fit on this bike. Uh, so that was something that I really did not enjoy, yeah. um, having longer cranks. This one might actually be classified by Ridley as an extra small, I think. But either way, <laughs> might have been, yeah. On and small or extra small, either one of the sizes shouldn't have 172.5 and that, cranks. And that made the toe overlap issue even more noticeable because that is an issue on this bike. And that's one of the reasons why we think it feels more like a cyclocross bike versus a gravel bike, is that when you're in technical terrain, your front, your, the front tire is touching your toes and a longer cranker in length makes that worse. Right, I mean, I, and I definitely noticed riding behind you, Ellen, that you certainly seemed less comfortable pushing, pushing it on this bike than some of the other ones. Yeah, this bike just didn't really, um, it wasn't like doing any of the riders any favors, although there were some aspects of it that were totally, I guess, par for the course. A lot of this bike, it kind of felt like uh, you were really fighting to get it to do what you wanted it to do. Okay, I wonder if one aspect of that was the fact that surprisingly this bike was I think actually the heaviest bike that we had in test, right? Second heaviest by a few grams, only beaten by a steel bike that is $700 cheaper. It's not a great sign because this frame is actually not that heavy. The claim weight is something like 1500 grams or so, probably unpainted, but still, that's yeah, not, not terrible. Yeah. Why is this bike so heavy? I think it's just a combination of all the components. The wheels, those Shimano wheels, that entry level Shimano wheel, it's reliable, but very, very heavy. And then the wire bead tire that they put on that bike, it's a also cheap heavy. tire, very heavy. And I think it's just the sum of the parts. It just adds up to a bike that weighs quite a bit, despite the fact that the price suggests that it shouldn't be one of the heaviest bikes we tested. Right, and it looks like it should be a fast sporty bike, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I quite like how it looks. To me, it looks like a cyclocross bike, and which is I great. I mean, it's Ridley. Yeah. It's not to be, not to be like, almost to be expected. Yeah. Yeah, um, they have a strong history in racing and I think it shines through on this bike. Okay, well, who's this bike for? Is it for anybody? What do you think? It's gotta be for somebody. For me, I think they've categorized it wrongly. I think they're calling it a adventure gravel bike. I don't believe it is that. I believe it is quite a capable all-road bike. Uh, and if you were to downsize the tire, put a 35 millimeter tire, maybe even a 32 millimeter tire, this is quite a fast feeling, quite a sporty feeling bike that can be used across a mix of surfaces. It could probably race a, a club level cyclocross race on one day and go for a little adventure down a, a fairly smooth gravel road the next. And I think it'd be pretty good at that. I still worry it's not great value, but it do a pretty good job at that, especially for someone coming from the road end that's used to like a more performance fit on a bike, they'd probably feel right at home on this. Fair. Okay, Ellen. I second what Dave said. Well, and I guess you said earlier, Feels like, feels like a cross bike that you raced 10 years ago. I, yeah, I stand by that. Okay, well, I guess cross bikes 10 years ago weren't bad. It's not as good as they could be now. Well, and they could only fit like a 34 mil tire. This can fit true. a 42, so. Fair enough, okay. 
All right, well, those are our conclusions on the Ridley Konzo A. If you like what you saw here, go ahead and hit that like button below. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content from us at Cycling Tips and at Field Test. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave that in the section below and we'll get back to you right away. Also, make sure you head over to cyclingtips.com for the full written review where we'll have a lot more details there. And finally, thanks to Asos for sponsoring this year's field test and making all this possible. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.